What is up, YouTube? It's been far too long. Uh, I have not made some videos in quite a while. I've been super busy. I apologize. All my new subscribers, all my existing subscribers. Thanks, guys, for uh, for hanging in there and being patient with me. Um, so as you can see, I, I have been true, though, in terms of trying to keep up on building my tank. Uh, I have been making progress on it. It's been real slow, but I have definitely come a long way in the past couple of months. Um, I was real close, if you remember, to uh, putting in uh, the rock and getting everything ready for cycle and letting it cycle through. And I, and I did actually manage to do that. Um, the rock layout that you probably originally saw in a, in a video or two ago uh, looked great on the table. And I swear to you, when I got it in this tank, and I know this is not a giant tank by any stretch, but it's a pretty large tank. Um, I put that rock display in there and it just looked so sad and lonely. It, was, it looked so small. Um, that I ended up having to go back on something that I didn't think I wanted to do and I'm glad I did now and that is I built a foam and rock wall to add to the tank uh, and as well to wrap over and cover the overflow I'm so glad I did that it looks so much better in my mind um, the only thing I wish I would have done was I wish I would have done this before I put the tank up and put water in it and started it cycling. I didn't really start staring at the tank going, hmm, it looks like crap without it until uh, you know it was well into the cycle. So I actually built that separately in my garage. I, I must have measured the tank like 20 times to make sure that I would build it so it could fit in because it's got to fit in over the frame, which is split at the top. And I built it out in my garage independently. Um, it turned out really, really great, but I'm not gonna lie to you guys. It's about 80 pounds, even with the foam. And I went and I lifted it up over the tank and I swear to you, it was like an inch too big. Uh, just the way I had laid out the rock and stuff, I didn't think about it at the time. And, and I ended up having to cut it strategically, I like to think, cut it so that I could get it in in two pieces. And then what I did was I set it in place and then at the very, I drained the water level down uh, and at the very, very top, I, I used uh, silicone to tack it in place, held it there with clamps overnight and then uh, brought the water level back up to where it is now. But, uh, but I swear to you, I was, I, was, I, I was on the verge of tears when I couldn't get that thing. And I'm like, I worked on this thing for like a month and a half, at, you know, wherever I could, 15 minutes here and there, epoxy, foam, everything, you know, it looked great. And it still does, but, but it, 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 somewhere in there, there's a seam. And if you guys can see it in the video, great. Uh, but I, it, you really can't tell by, by looking at it. So a um, couple of things, I've obviously moved everybody from my 10 gallon tank into the new tank. Uh, they're loving it, corals included. I just added the corals last week. So the tank's been up and running for almost a month and a half before I added the corals. Um, and the fish as well, actually. They've, they've been in for a couple of weeks, actually. I just moved everybody all at once. I decided to wait till the tank was at least close to being ready to move corals in before I would move everybody in. I didn't want to move just the fish in and then wait to do the corals. I just did everybody at once. Um, and since it was two fish, it's not exactly a huge bio load. But, um, and then maybe, maybe more than two weeks, but um, maybe about three weeks. But, uh, but I, did, I did move them in. Everybody's doing fine. Um, no, no ick or anything like that, which, you know, I was just a little scared that maybe that might occur, even though they were in the 10 gallon tank for the better part of a year. Um, you know, who knows? So I moved everybody in, everything worked out great. Uh, the corals are doing really well. I have the light set really high because, uh, they're not used to the intensity of light that, that this fixture, this tech five fixture puts out. It's an eight bulb. Um, but I did do that. And then one thing that I really wanted to do. Um, that I really got that I was super happy about was uh, reefcleaners.org, which uh, great, uh, great place to order from. I had a great experience uh, and one of the few places that I could find a Florida fighting conch. Um, so he is a four, maybe four and a half inch large conch snail. They don't get much bigger than where he is right now. Uh, and they are great um, sand stirrers and algae detritus cleaners. Um, and I'm really glad to have him in there. He loves to mull around. They kind of hop around when they walk uh, and they just clean up the surface of the sand and he's doing a really good job all by himself. Uh, I'm interested maybe in also getting a, a, a sea cucumber uh, as well, but I'm sort of slowly building my cleanup crew rather than introducing a large one uh, because I know that there's gonna be die off from algae and I don't wanna have uh, you know, a larger cleaner, cleaner uh, crew, cleanup crew die off 
in part or in whole because there's not enough food to feed them. So I'm adding a little bit at a time, I'm taking my time. I don't mind that there's you know a huge amount of algae buildup in terms of the diatoms and, and the green algae. I know it's gonna go away, I'm not in any rush. Um, you know, Also as well, the, green, the shift to the green algae uh, is sort of my cue to get the ball rolling on the algae scrubber, which I have not installed yet. So coming up in some future videos, we'll be doing an algae scrubber as well. You'll see me get that ready and, and start it running. And then I'll do kind of a weekly diary. I'm planning on doing a weekly diary um, to show you guys the progress we make on that. So let's take a look at the back end real quick. Um, I don't want to spend too much time on this video because there's going to be more videos coming. But uh, let's go look at the back end real quick and see how that's progressed and how I finalized that. And then I'll start working on the next videos for the algae scrubber and everything else that I have to do. So going into my fish room, one of the things I probably haven't discussed or you saw part of was I had replaced originally half the floor where the tank sat with a rubber mat. Uh, I did go back and actually get more rubber mat and pull out the rest of the carpet. And so now I have a completely rubberized floor. For the aquarium room, also slash art supply room for my daughters, um, they keep their art supplies over there. I keep my fish over here and everybody's happy. Uh, they're not allowed over here. I'm not allowed over there. Pretty, pretty cool relationship if you ask me. So anyway, it's kind of impossible to get a real full shot of everything all at once, but I will start at the top and work my way down. As you can see, I've, I've done quite a bit of work here. Uh, in terms of adding a couple of things so we'll go through it real quick and I'll show you um, and then of course if you have any questions about specifics ask them I will answer them as quick as I can uh, so starting with the top um, I ended up with a 8 bulb tech T5 bulb um, output they are what, 54 watts per bulb 8 bulbs do the math and the recommended uh, front to back running of the bulbs, uh, I'm using all ATI bulbs and one Coralife bulb, um, ATI uh, Blue Plus, Purple Plus, Blue Plus, the Coralife 6700K, uh, Blue Plus, Purple Plus, Blue Plus, Blue Plus. The plumbing has remained pretty much the same. Um, I did finalize on my sump pump, so you can see right here this this line that's going up and over the top of the tank that's actually coming from the sump. So if we go down, there's a little valve for turn off there, so I can uh, uh, disconnect the sump if I need to without a back siphon. Um, the two return pipes, obviously the overflow pipes, but that goes down. I use some spa flex to go into the tank, um, mainly because the pump that I have. Um, it's a mag 5 it's noisy I would never buy another mag 5 by the way I don't know if you guys have them it's quieted down quite a bit but it's still quite noisy it's the noisiest pump I own um, and I would definitely spend the money on a, um, an Aha an Eheim uh, pump which is almost double the price but uh, I would really consider doing that and I, I may do that in the near future but that's so far down on my list it's not even funny uh, the stand has then since been extended as I was originally planning on anyway uh, and this portion of the stand holds my quarantine tank. This was the 10 gallon uh, Nano that I had going on here. So you may recognize that. Uh, sands the rock and soon to be uh, removing the sand. I'll be removing the sand and, and putting it in my refugium since it's got all manner of good live critters in it. Uh, still the same tank uh, filter on there, the Aqua Clear. And I will be replacing the covered top with, uh, with these clamp lights. Uh, I'll probably mount them a little bit nicer so they don't look so uh, so cheesy, but um, just going to put some basic 50-50 bulb in there, uh, or even a 6700K, it doesn't matter, it's just fresh quarantine, so won't make that much of a difference, but that's in there with its own heater and everything, so I could treat it with copper if I need to, things of that nature. Moving on underneath, I finally got my RODI system, uh, obviously, if you can't tell, I bought it from Bulk Reef Supply, it was a pretty good deal, I had a lot of... Uh, I had a lot of points to the point where I had uh, about $70 off, so how could you resist buying one from Bulk Reef Supply? There's a couple other places that are perfectly good too. Uh, I just did this because for $70 off it was worth my effort. Um, I did get the, um, the chloramine system because they do put chloramines in my water here in Tampa. Um, I did check my report for that. 
uh, you want to check your report too if you're thinking about doing that definitely worth the uh, the extra money and so what I did was um, the line for this feeds from the closest water source I had so I teed off of you ready for this one let's go look and see the toilet yes oh that's so funny right I know it's perfectly clean water just like you would from anywhere else but that goes straight into the wall which happens to be directly on the opposite side of where I put the RODI unit so that worked out perfectly uh, but it feeds into there I've got a turn off valve uh, right now I do not keep pressure on the RODI unit at all I turn it off when I'm done making it uh, it's a bit of a manual process but I don't need to top off that much once a week it's not that big of a deal um, I have it uh, filling up a five gallon bucket and let's take a look I did get the float valve now I have to tell you that's money well spent because if I have read once I've read a thousand times about how people forget that their RODI unit is on and they end up with a flood so I ordered that with the specific intent of putting it in the bucket so that if I forget to turn that valve off the float valve will turn it off for me and then I can come back and I can turn off the, the valve and thank everybody for not having a uh, flood on my floor so it'll also come in handy when I when I end up automating the top off but for now since it's a manual process that's just um, an extra uh, ounce of uh, prevention 